Hi folks and welcome to my love affair with show business. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite people in Hollywood. She had an amazing career and her life was so sad as so many people in Hollywood, they have such fame, but their personal lives are so bad. And the person I'm talking about is Rita Hayworth. Now, you may wonder, why Rita Hayworth? Well, I'm going to tell you. I was going through my drawers and closets. I'm always, you know, getting rid of stuff. Isn't that what most of us are doing? Trying to get rid of the junk in our home to create a little more space. I was doing that. And I came across this picture I knew I had, but I never framed um, and put on my wall. This is a picture of Rita Hayworth, and my little producers in the back will take a close-up of it. It's interesting in that it says, To Anita, best wishes, Rita Cancino. Okay, now the people who are very familiar with Rita Hayworth's career will kind of understand that. But for the people who don't, Rita Cancino. Okay, she was Margarita Cancino before she went to the movies and, of course, back in the day, you know, the 30s and the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, they'd make up names if you had a boring name. I mean, you know, Cary Grant was Archie Leach, right? Isn't that, could you imagine Archie Leach being that sophisticated, amazing actor that we know as Cary Grant? Well, maybe Margarita Cancino would have been the same thing. Actually, they wanted to get rid of that name because it sounded too ethnic, right? And back in those days, you had to be non-ethnic or else you were pigeonholed. So she became Rita Hayworth, but I have never read and I have many books of Rita Hayworth including these two that I have here that my little producers in the back will take close-ups. These are great books of Rita Hayworth. Okay, so before she became Rita Hayworth, obviously she was Rita Cancino. The reason why I really like Rita Hayworth is the musical stuff she did. And as the people who know Rita Hayworth know that she was known as the love goddess. And it all started with a picture called, of course, Gilda. And she is so, she's just beautiful in it. It was a film noir, an early film noir movie. She was great. She was gorgeous. Um, in the Shawshank Redemption, which is what, a 15-year-old movie with Morgan Freeman and, oh, shame on me. He's so good. Tim Robbins, that's his name. They did that movie in, in the first scene, unless I... I I forgot, they're watching a movie in prison, and it's Gilda of Rita Hayworth, and it's showing that first scene. The first shot of, of Rita Hayworth, it's just gorgeous. And fortunately or unfortunately, she became a superstar, and they traded in on that love goddess image, not the musical. But we're going to talk about the musical, because I love Rita in her musical movies. Before she became famous, she was a not an extra, but she'd be like a specialty act where she'd like do a dance, but she didn't have any um, conversation. She grew up um, with she grew up in an act with her father, Edward Cancino, who was quite famous and who actually gave Fred Astaire some lessons. Kind of neat, huh? Because Fred Astaire did two pictures with her. Um, she has a, a major dance background, not going to ballet classes and mo modern. I don't even know if modern was a term back then in dance classes. Uh, she got very good, but really the best way to learn your trade is to do it. It's great going to school. It's great going to acting school. You need the foundation, but you got to act. That is what is going to teach you how to act. So you get yourself into Little movies, you just keep acting. You start. You, most people start out as an extra, and if they have the will really strong, they become better than that. Lucille Ball was one of those people. She was. A, she started out as an extra. She was a Goldwyn girl. Now, of course, we know Lucy is not musical. If you've seen Mame, you'd know. Though, uh, talking about Lucy, I have to say, remember the episode with Van Johnson, where his dancer got sick and she did the dance. She was really good, wasn't she? 
Very interesting. But the best scene in that I Love Lucy show, and I know I'm going on a tangent, is when she ran back to her dressing room after the show was over, and she was overwhelmed with what she had just done. Oh, she was so good. But we'll talk about Lucy another time. Okay, back to Rita. The three movies that Rita really became famous and respected, and this was before Gilda, was the two movies with Fred Astaire, You'll Never Get Rich and You Were Never Lovelier, and then Gene Kelly, Cover Girl. Oh, she's so good. She is dancing, and you know, you can't dance with um, Fred Astaire or Gene Kelly if you're not a dancer, and if you're not a dancer, you're going to become a dancer by the, by, by the time of filming. So, Rita, You'll never get rich, you'll never get lovelier with Fred Astaire. She's so, she's so good. She worked her ass off for Fred Astaire. So Fred was a friend of the family, so it's not like Rita didn't know him. But to dance with him, and we're talking the early 40s, that means after all the nine movies he did with Ginger Rogers, Fred Astaire was a superstar by the late 30s, especially when you factor in musicals. Nobody was better. This was before, I think, um, For Me and My Gal, which was Gene Kelly's first film, was 1941. So he wasn't even on the scene. And nobody equaled what Fred Astaire did in movies. I mean, it is amazing. Even if you hate old movies and you don't want to watch black and white, which I always have an issue with when people say that. I'm asked, you know, when all my films I have, is it in color? Is that the reason why you're not going to watch a movie because it's not in color? I don't think so. Fred Astaire was a very nice man. Gene Kelly has a reputation of not being so nice as a choreographer, as the teacher, as he's teaching his um, leading ladies how to dance. Fred Astaire was more of a gentleman. But you had to dance. You had to work. And Fred Astaire would not be filmed until he knew his routines and maybe three months of rehearsal would go. Now that was a reputation he had so the dancers who knew they'd be in his films knew that they were in for a long period of rehearsing. This is why Fred Astaire is dancing and Fred Astaire it's great in the 60s when he did talk shows the talk show hosts would say uh you were just above dancing. What you did was so great. How did you do it? How did you transcend dance? And basically his answer was always the same, saying, I practiced all the time. It's no secret. I rehearsed, I rehearsed, I rehearsed. And he, it really, and his numbers did. He did transcend dancing. They were just wonderful. Okay, so Rita, who was very young, she was in her early 20s when she did the booze with Fred Astaire, certainly had the energy. He was in his 40s. But we have to remember, he did maybe his best musicals with Arthur Freed in the 50s. When he was in his 50s, he was born in 1901. No, I, I think that, I, I'm sorry, I believe that was 1899. Okay, two years. <laughs> uh, but the guy was limber. Um, so Rita, she was so good in these pictures that, again, you know, you can... Netflix or whatever. This, these are movies you can see. You were never lovelier and you'll never get rich. They're just great. The mo I mean, they're cute. You know, the plots of musicals back then were not deep. They are now. That is the great thing about musicals now. They have a stronger plot. But back then, basically, it was, it was just getting to the musical numbers, which were great. I mean, uh, when I, I just said that, I thought of Busby Berkeley. Most of the movies he did were awful except for the musical numbers. They were great, but we're not going to get into Busby Berkeley now because I'd never shut up if I started talking about him and his career in Hollywood. Okay, so then Cover Girl comes, and then she dances with uh, Gene Kelly. Wonderful movie. It's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. It's hard to explain watching Rita dance. She was very proficient. She wasn't a... You know, somebody who worked hard to learn how to dance. She was a dancer. She understood the basics of ballet and tap. And tap, of course, was the dance of the 30s and 40s and mostly 50s. Mostly it was tap dancing um, movies. Okay, then Gilda comes and she, uh, she becomes a love goddess. 
She was bigger than anybody else. I urge you to see Gilda. It is such an entertaining movie. Glenn Ford is in it very young. Um, all right. But unfortunately, with so many of the superstars and so many of the love goddesses, she got into alcoholism. So sad, because she really had a talent. But she was basically a very shy person. If you go to YouTube and you see her few, I mean, not few, I mean, there were few interviews, but we're talking about 30 years. So there's a lot you can see on um, YouTube in her interviews. She was a very shy person. She was not the love goddess um, personally. She was just a shy person. It, very sad. Started drinking. Now, Rita Hayworth was one of the first people who, who were diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Not one of the first people who were diagnosed with Alzheimer's. But she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. She was one of the first people that made it public. Her and Ronald Reagan were Alzheimer's. And now there's zillions of dollars trying to find a um, cure for Alzheimer's. Uh, but unfortunately, not yet. We live longer, but unfortunately we don't necessarily live better. And Rita Hayworth, she was so into her alcoholism that it took years for people to realize her dementia was not a result of the alcoholism, but it was a result of the Alzheimer's. So sad. She could have had such a great career, but she had multiple, multiple marriages. Her first marriage was to her um, agent, who was older than her. Judson was his last word. It was not a good marriage, but he kind of made her very famous, but it didn't work out. Her second marriage was to Orson Welles. Rita always talked about Orson Welles as the best relationship she had. Orson Welles was a genius, of course. If you're aware of Orson Welles, I don't have to go into it. If you don't know of him, it doesn't matter. But if you know of him, you know he was a genius. Again, like Busby Berkeley, it would be a whole episode to talk about. Well, he was a womanizer back then. It, it was really nothing. You know, it was like a conquest to marry the love goddess, Rita Hayworth. And he did a movie with her where he took her. She was a brunette with long hair, cut all the hair off, dyed her hair blonde, and um, did Shanghai Express with Rita. It's a great movie, but it was a flop. People did not want to see Rita being serious as an actor with no music, with no comedy. But Orson tried, but by the time, interesting enough, by the time they did Shanghai Express, they were either separated or divorced, but they worked together. Ironically, as shy as Rita was, she married Prince Ali Khan. This is comparable to Grace Kelly marrying Prince Renier, but their marriage lasted. Ali Khan and her didn't. She was not somebody who really wanted the spotlight. Very odd that she married this playboy who had a major reputation of uh, being with the most beautiful women, being a playboy. Well, it seemed like Ali Khan needed to marry. You know, he, he was uh, a prince. He needed to have roots. He needed to you know, grow in his monarchy. Well, it didn't work out. His, his life really was, was tragic in a whole other way. Um, it's interesting, though, that Rita Hayworth married him because she was really a shy person who did not want to be in the spotlight. But you marry somebody like Ali Khan, like Grace did Prince Renier, you're going to be in the spotlight. It was an awful marriage. It didn't last long at all. Okay, then she goes into Dick Hames. Now, you may say, who? Which is so sad because Dick Hames was a baritone. He had a few years of big fame. He did a few movies with Betty Grable, one with Alice Faye. He was a a fantastic singer. He was really the equal of Bing Crosby as far as a beautiful baritone voice goes. But unfortunately, he um, totally ruined his career with drug abuse, with alcoholism. Totally. Where he's a footnote now in movies, where he should have been he should have had the career of, of Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra. Rita Hayworth married him, and it was a, it was an alcoholic haze uh, between the two of them. Her children were taken away. Her two children, um, and it was just it was just sad. It was just sad. 
All right, so after Dick Hames came James Hill, who was a great director. He um, directed Rita in Separate Tables, which showed that she could have been a great dramatic actress. She was great in this. I think she was even um, nominated for an Academy Award. Well, that didn't last either because James Hill went through a period of alcoholism when he was married to Rita. And Rita, Rita was well, well into the drinking. So sad, so tragic, but she was a shy person. In order to be, to show that confidence and that beauty, she needed to drink. Which is a funny thing to say because if you need to drink to do that, wouldn't you think maybe you shouldn't be doing it? But this is all in retrospect. You know, we're talking about the 40s and the 50s now. Okay, so of course that marriage didn't work either. And Rita was getting more into more into her alcoholism. But then by the early 60s, it wasn't about alcoholism, though she was still drinking. And unfortunately, and you can see it on YouTube, there's some episodes where she's coming off a plane, where she's so disheveled and she's so drunk and it is so sad. It's just, it's just sad. And of course, I watch it a lot because I'm so intrigued. And she did do a bunch of movies in the 50s and the 60s, but she was pretty much a shadow of what she was. Still gorgeous, though. Okay, once it became known that she was gone and she had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and she definitely could not take care of herself, one of her daughters, Princess Yasmin, who was obviously the daughter of Ali Khan, took care of her, got her an apartment in Manhattan, took care of her. She didn't go out at those times. She was very, very sick at, at, by that, this point, and she died. All right, not talking about her death, which is sad. She wasn't old. I don't even know if she made it to 70 years old. But you want to, whatever you do, videos, YouTube, you want to see Rita Hayworth because it is wonderful to see. She's gorgeous. Unfortunately, she couldn't sing, so all the musicals, they're using different voices. But I have to tell you, the voices they use, it really seemed like um, Rita was singing. Now, of course, her big song, which wasn't the musical, and it was only, actually, there were two songs in Gilda, but Gilda isn't considered a musical, was Put the Blame on Me, which is great. She's doing a strip tease, and it's great. But if you watch it, all she does is take off only one glove. And yet, it seems like, she, it seems like she's stripping. Very interesting. Of course, the movies of the 40s, the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you couldn't have people stripping. So it was up to the directors to show something that gives you the hint. Alfred Hick Hitchcock was great about lovers sleeping together without showing it because back then the censors would not allow it. But you got the impression that they had slept together. As if that's a sin or something. I mean, even with married couples, they couldn't sleep together in the movies. Then, of course, the 60s comes around and everybody's sleeping together and fucking all over the place. And it really, it was almost like a overcompensation. Oh, we can show breasts. Oh, this is great. We can show sex. People think the same, the same bed. It was almost overly done um, because it, it was gratuitous. It didn't have to do with the plot. And a lot of movies now, I, I see and I'm thinking, oh, this um, violence is just because of people expect it. They're, they're not into a good script. So you have to overcompensate with the sexual scenes and the violence. Well, obviously, I'm into old movies where that wasn't allowed. And I, I kind of prefer that, though it is interesting to see movies today that give the impression that they slept together or that there's violence going on, but they're not showing it. They're few and far between, but those are the best directors because they're using their intelligence to show something without being graphic. Okay, back to Rita. I hope... This made you get an interest in Rita Hayworth because she really was one of the special, special ones of the superstars of old Hollywood. So, thanks for watching, folks. Take care.